Hey everyone, welcome back to the Overseers. This is Proelios and I'm joined as usual by Nightwing and we've also got 1HP back for this episode. How, how are you doing after the hiatus 1HP? Oh yeah, very good. It's just uh, been loads of work in there, but just happy to be able to talk about Rostra is interesting as London, especially because we, you know it's it's just getting rare to see more and more EU players involved. So uh, good on them. But yeah, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, uh, London's gone for an all European roster, and this is a pretty big change from the all Korean lineups they've been running for the past three seasons, right? So shall we get into the tanks first so the, the way we usually do it is go for with the tanks first then the dps then the supports then the coaching staff and then share our final thoughts to round off the discussion so are you guys set yep yep all right so the tank line for the london spitfire is hardy and molfig who were the tank duo for the british hurricane which is the spitfire's contender stream so, Nightwing, what do you feel about this tank line? Because they've been pretty dominant in EU contenders. Yeah, I mean, pretty dominant is kind of saying it lightly. I mean, stuff like this doesn't even happen like in any other version of contenders. These guys have just been like terrifying the entirety of contenders Europe. Like they, they came first and pretty much did not lose almost any matches. Apart from like one to like Obey Alliance, uh, I think in one of those weeks, and like the thing is that I think people kind of underrate uh, EU a little bit sometimes. But all, then there is also an argument to be made that the level of competition in EU is not that high anymore because all the good players are either signed and shipped off to Korea or uh, NA for Overwatch League. Um, so. These guys were just left here and they just kept dominating over and over again every single week and season of contenders for the past like year and a half or something like that. And I think it's time they kind of find some competition that can, uh, you know, give them a fair challenge. Because I think both of these guys like have not really been tested yet. Uh, like, like a litmus test compared to like players that you are more familiar with and that uh, like the more, more like general audience would know like mostly Overwatch League players and that's something that they have an opportunity to do this season and the other thing is that they're used to playing on ping as well which which might actually be a boon for them because I think they're going to be based out of London uh, so they're going to have to like play tournaments like on high ping so that's that's a good thing for them. Molfig is an incredibly good Sigma. Hardy is, I think, a good all-rounder. Uh, not too many holes in his hero pool, I think. Uh, I think he's probably one of the uh, better balls in the region as well. I mean, you, you can't really fault him for like any particular hero because they just kept dominating in pretty much everything. But like apart from like ball one tricks that you would see uh, playing for like avoided or like an Orissa one trick or ball one trick or like some of those other one one trick specialists on avoided you would probably just call these guys the best at pretty much like every hero in their region because they were they would just you know show up to the lobby and just dominate so i i just want to see them tested against like overwatch league caliber players mm -hmm. Yeah, like very well said because Hari and Molfig, I think they've been a tank duo with British Hurricane for almost two years at this point. And ever since they were brought together, they just sort of formed a really solid in-game bond, right? They have been through nearly every sort of tank combination that's been meta. Uh, they've both played all of the tanks required. So we've seen them in Dive with Winston Diva, we've seen them with Balsig, Orisa, Grind Zarya. They, they've played it all and they've played it all at a very high level. And even though people say that, hey, you know, it's EU contenders, it's not as good as Korea. Uh, think of it this way, right? Uh, the last time we saw, and, and just for context, right, a lot of these players uh, on the London roster are from British Hurricane. And the last time we saw 
almost a full team or rather an actual full team being picked up from contenders and brought into the Overwatch League. They ended up placing first in the in the season standings as the Vancouver Titans uh, in season two, right? So I think a lot of people are underrating how good this tank duo can be because British Hurricane, it was even more dominant in EU than Runaway was in Korea. And even if you say that Korea is a more competitive region, like it's it's no joke to be someone that loses no matches in a full contenders season, right? So Hari and Molfek just incredibly versatile, incredibly strong players. And I think their synergy is something that's a big boon to this team because not all of the tank lines have got that, right? They haven't had nearly as much time to work on their synergy as these guys. And I mean, just I'm just super excited to see them. And I do believe that they are all caliber. I think they can deliver some really good performances to us. So please don't sleep on this tank line, guys. That's all I would advise you to do. Because I haven't really heard much hype about them. I think they're going to be quite good. Mon HP, any points to add about them? I think the, the reason we haven't seen any hype about them just goes on to say how underappreciated the tier 2 scene is. Um, and um, how how sort of like how easy it is for like actual god tier people to go under the radar just because they're not at the uh, very top uh, in their competitive platform. Uh, as for Hadi and Molfik themselves, I agree with you that even though EU is technically the easiest of the regions, and I think the only one region that you can dominate, you know, in that way if you're good enough, but this sort of thing can't just go unnoticed or just be talked over as something that's just normal, which it isn't. So credit where it's due. And Hadi, of course, uh, I, I wouldn't comment too much on Molfig. I, I haven't noticed anything too extraordinary, but with Hadi, it's just that um, he's just too reliable on every role. Uh, like Nightwing mentioned, he has a very serviceable ball, but not only just the ball, it's just he could play any tank at the same level. And I think that that's very important and is going to help them. Like this is one team I think that because of him, they won't really need a main tank replacement or anything. So like some other teams have got that sort of a thing going for them, but they won't. And I think, uh, yeah, that's that's just the sort of... Uh, it's like we, we talked about pre-existing synergies and everything. And that also plays into uh, what they're going for now. And like I said, at the very start, it's just good to see uh you know a strong eu roster uh coming back into play when we think that it's the region itself is like getting weaker and weaker in general uh and especially in like uh, how much they're showcased worldwide so uh good for them and um expecting good things as well mm -hmm. all right so that said should we then move on to the dps line guys yeah okay yeah of course all right uh, so the London Spitfire have signed four DPS players this year. Uh, that's Blase, Hybrid, Shax, and Sparker. Uh, now I want to go over each of these DPS individually because all of them come from very, very sorry, varied backgrounds. English. Um, and let's start things off with Blase. And I think I'll let One HP go first on on this guy. Let's go. Um, Blase, of course. Uh, flex roll and um. I think overall, like, quite an underappreciated uh, flex player at times because he has shown uh, sort of, you know, his his proper moments on both, uh, I think it was first Boston and then uh, Houston Outlaws. And it's just uh, crazy to me how, you know, a team which had both him and Dante was just struggling so much in the past. And that just goes off to show how important coaching is and how important these little things are especially in overwatch like if you compare it to any of the other games which i would sort of you know uh go for the sports of the year title then you would uh clearly like come up with the conclusion that overwatch clearly is the most teamwork of all and uh, blase is one of the prime examples of uh something like that um uh, setting a player back I think he will benefit greatly from the current roster, I think, because there's been so much signups from British Hurricane. And moreover, uh, he's the only Western player in an otherwise... Uh, is he the only Western player or is he one of the two only Western players in the otherwise uh, EU lineup? 
but still he's uh, going to find it easier and I feel as though with the appropriate amount of coaching there isn't like as much of a skill gap between him and the very top of the DPS players for me so I would say that Blase at least like you know he, he's always been good on ladder he's always you know been half consistent in PO Watch League and uh, I think he's more than good enough to stay in the tournament and um, I'm just happy that he has been signed on to a team that can hopefully maybe just like if if he doesn't uh, if he isn't able to reach his best with this roster then it's not happening for me and um, I just hope he does because the Farah and Genji play from him is very good he can also bring out the Doomfist whenever needed and he's like a very impact based player when he plays it so I don't feel as though they've settled for someone and rather they have picked a person like who knows his strengths. Mm -hmm. Nightwing, you want to add to that? Uh, I think I don't agree almost at all. I think Blase had, has had a very unimpressive career, to be honest. Uh, he like shows up on ranked quite often and hits rank one, I think, uh, quite often. But like, I don't know. I haven't seen some like great performances from him, to be honest. Like obviously, Houston did not like use his flexibility that well. Uh, but also, he was on Boston, where they they were literally apart from Florida Mayhem, they were the second worst team in the league uh, in 2019. Uh, I'm just not that convinced that Blase is like. I, I feel like he is the kind of player that he would settle on. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I think the other DPS players are far better than Blase. Uh, I mean, apart from Hybrid, who I'm not sure about, but Shax and Sparker, I think, are definitely much like of a higher caliber than Blase. I'm not not too hot on him going into this season. If I'm wrong, then then that'll that'll bite me back later. But I don't know. I'm just not too confident in Blase. I think he he is kind of the the settled the player that you settled on the only success he's had recently is winning uh like uh, the flash ops uh tournament the the what was it the 4v4 team death match thing uh apart from that like blaze has been kind of disappointing to be honest with you um if he does well then good for him but i'm i'm not too too optimistic about him mm -hmm. all right so my take on this take like steals some points from both your arguments. So from what I've seen, Blase is an individually skilled player. I think his mechanics are quite good. Um, in season three, he really showed us his prowess on Doomfist, which I think is undoubtedly his best hero, at least based on what he showcased in the Overwatch League. Uh, I think even his Genji is pretty darn good, uh, but one has to ask, right, if you've got such an individually talented player, how doesn't that player get you wins? Uh, it's it's rather a puzzling question, and I don't have the answer for it. But overall, based on the situation, like, let's just look at this for a moment. You've got an individual who's probably got really good mechanical skill, but hasn't been able to get Ws for whichever team has been on, uh, be it the Boston Uprising or the Houston Outlaws. And... Now he's been signed by London. So I don't know if they've signed him just as a makeshift player. But the thing is, he's the only sort of projectile DPS on this roster right now. So I do think London has some faith in his abilities. And I mean, it, it is a risky signing, I won't lie to you. But I'm at least glad to see Blase being the sole flex DPS. Because with this, he can take center stage and try to really prove himself and showcase his talents. Because... Um, if if we saw him on the Boston Uprising, he was playing roles which he isn't really known for. He was playing things like May, um, like and during goals he was playing Brig, <laughs> McCree for the Houston Outlaws. So he's been fielded so far a lot on heroes that are not really his forte. Uh, whenever we've seen him on his comfort picks, he has been good. I think like classic example is the Doomfist which I keep bringing up. I keep remembering that one match on Anubis they had, the Outlaws, they just played Doomfist against like a team playing McCree and they absolutely wrong. I know it's like a skill-based matchup, McCree versus Doomfist, but it's, it's still like, it's a testament to how individually t talented Blase was on that hero. So, 
if they can utilize him in the right way, they might be able to get some value out of him. But overall, it's a damn risky signing, according to me. So, yeah, I think I'm somewhere on the fence. Uh, but yeah, I, both of you made like pretty solid points about it. So, uh, that said, let, let's move on to Hybrid, right? Uh, so, Hybrid is a hit scan player coming from Team Doge, from uh, American Contenders. Uh, he is relatively new to the pro scene. From what I've seen, he's not that great. Uh, I'm not really too convinced because after watching his watch, he, he doesn't really make plays. I don't even know if he's super consistent. He isn't someone that's talked about a lot. So I don't really think he's going to be a high-impact player at all. I, he, he might as well be bottom tier in, in the Overwatch League. Um, those are pretty much my opinions on him. I really don't have anything else to add. I just, I'm not a fan of this pickup. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I think at least. Uh, sorry, did I cut someone off? I was just gonna say that at least with uh, you know having Sparker as well on the roster, I just don't see. You know, since their starter is going to be Shax, uh, at least for now, I don't understand where Hybrid comes into all of this, especially with Blasi being the only flex. It's just a little confusing. So yeah, totally agreed. Yeah, I think uh, Hybrid is, is gonna be like a. He's just gonna. Next, uh, wait for Sparker to come, like come of age, uh, because Sparker is not going to be playable till June. And considering there's only 16 games in the season, that's that's still a considerable chunk of the season. So I think hybrid is definitely going to be uh, not that impressive. If you look at the team he played for in Contenders, which is Team Doge, uh, compared to when they were dominating. Similarly to British Hurricane, but not not quite there. Team Doge was doing a lot better when they had players like Onigor and Kevster in for DPS instead of uh, Speedily and uh, Hybrid. Uh, I think it's mostly the the rest of the synergy that the tank line with Salieri, Elivote, and uh, OG had that that kind of carried the roster to even f- fifth or sixth place because I think Hybrid and Speedily did not have like exceptional looks in my personal opinion uh, so yeah I think it's just that Sparker is still underage and they need someone to fill him in maybe he did well in tryouts I'm not really sure uh, but C9 do have a tendency as an org to go for kind of cheaper picks uh, sometimes especially last year as well as this year so may- maybe they were just getting a good deal on him and this saw that he was on like a decent team uh, I'm actually wondering if, uh, sorry, this relates more to Blase because it's about flex players, but I'm wondering if uh, C9 considered signing like Nico, but he had a buyout fees for Young and Beautiful because I think Nico might have actually done better for better than Blase. Uh, I don't know. That, that's just what I think because I think he, Nico still looked better with the Paris Eternal. Uh, Mm-hmm. But yeah, hybrid. Not, not too excited about him going through the season. But maybe he can surprise a little bit. But the thing is, the level of hit scans in the league is just crazy. So if a player is already not looking dominant in contenders, he, I think he's gonna have a bit of a rough time in Overwatch League. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you then want to talk about Sparker a bit, Nightwing? Since you mentioned him. Yeah, I mean, Sparker is a nut, dude. Uh, he's he's still underage. He won't be able to uh, play to like June tenth, I believe, uh, which which leaves like April, May, and like half of June almost, uh, which is quite a big chunk of the season because they're instead of playing like forty or twenty eight games this season, there's only going to be sixteen, and so each game really matters. And the difference between middle of the pack teams is really only going to be like one or two games. Um, so I, I'm a bit concerned that Sparker is just going to be a bit late. But when he does come in, I think he's going to make a considerable impact on this team. Uh, Sparker and Shax, both of these players have incredible Tracer play. Uh, I think Shax might be a little better on the Tracer, but I think uh, Sparker is a bit more like rounded overall as a kind of hit scan player 
and I I think he he's just gonna instantly bench a hybrid when he comes in. To be honest with you, uh, I I'm just really excited to see him play on the Overwatch League scale. He's he's been doing really well uh, playing with British Hurricane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think. Yeah. Do you have any more points? Yeah. Go ahead. The bro. the other DPS on British Hurricane was Dan, right? Danid. Danid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why wasn't he signed? I don't I, get it. <laughs> I know you. I'm as confused as you are. I I I would rather sign Danid over Blase. Like, I think his Doomfist might be at least comparable, if not better. Uh, he's more of a flex. I think Danit's Echo is definitely better than Blase's, um, at least from what I have seen. This might be because he's done uh, against EU EU talent, uh, so he pops off more. But I think I would just take a risk on Danit instead of signing Blase, who who's kind of constantly disappointed. Sorry, I keep hip hopping between um, different DPS, but that's okay. This just came to mind. I, I feel bad for Danit. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it about is, the DPS from me. I think. Is I mean, Danid, apart from Shax. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just asking: Is Daniel like underage as well, or is he? Because if he's is like he? sixteen, if he's like sixteen, then it doesn't make sense for him to be signed to the league right now. But I don't know how old he is. <laughs> Wait, let me just Wait, look it up. Let me. Daniel is no, he's twenty-three. He's twenty-three. Okay. I think Danit is like older than Blase. Okay, then that's interesting, but yeah. Sad, I guess. I, I don't get it. Just unlucky. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to Sparker, though. I think you're absolutely right about him. He's a pretty cracked player. I think also the advantage of bringing him in is that he's pretty young at the moment. He's likely to stick around for longer. Uh, and he's quite an explosive player, right? You need at least one player of that type to be on your team in the Overwatch League just to carry you through some of those rough games. And uh, yeah, it's it's true that Hybrid's probably just going to be perma bench when Sparker comes of age. I think what they're going to do is just play Shax as much as possible, like Shax and Blase. Uh, they bring in Hybrid whenever it's double head scan so that Shax can play Racer. And then when Sparker comes of age, they just bench hybrid forever and <laughs> just play Shaq Sparker if they if there's double hits again. But yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wish we were still in 2016. We could just feel like double tracer, Ooh. Shaq's tracer, Sparker tracer. Yeah, this team would own. Not maybe all the teams, but it would still own. <laughs> okay. Uh, any points from your side, one HP about Sparker? No, I, I was just, uh, you know, going about the hybrid pickup and why it doesn't make sense to me based off of how good Sparker is. And I think you guys covered the rest of it, really. Uh, first of all, of course, super fucking dominant. And secondly, um, with Sharks, it just makes that, you know, uh, double hits can possibly so, so more lucrative for them to play. But um, speaking otherwise, um, I think I agree with Nightwing. Uh, Now I'm hip-hopping back to someone, as he said. Uh, Well, going back to Blase, I do definitely agree that Blase is not on the same level. But um, I just feel as though, like like Proelio said, that there has to be a reason for them to have picked him as the only flex. I mean, sure, it could be an option with them just going with someone half reliable and cheap, but then it's a role you're just covering with one person. So I feel as though they have something in mind, hopefully. And um, coming back to Scar- uh, Sparker again, it's it's just uh, refreshing to see that they picked up most of the roster, if not all of it, for, from from the British Hurricane. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really fucking nutty when he comes of age. Mm-hmm. Uh, then 1HP, do you want to kick us off with Shax? Oh yeah, um, absolutely adore Shax. So this might be a bit biased, but... Um, I totally like you know agree with the points or references that have been made in relation to him so far. Uh, I think uh, Sharks is a top top caliber player, uh, and I think we've seen that. You know, usually we we talk about these players coming in and going out, and we feel as though you know, wait, what's wrong with him? Why isn't he 
why isn't he performing so well if you if you think he's so good blah 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 so with Shax, he's actually gone and done that he's actually performed very well at the highest level um even when his team was at times dog shit so i i even rate his tracer like maybe you know well within the top five uh, on his good days even in the top three and he's just super fucking good at the hit scan role in general and i feel as though he's like the strongest uh, pivot among the dps till at least parker comes of age and then we don't know how he's going to perform in the overwatch league so as things stand at least uh Shax, for me is like the biggest of thumbs up in terms of the dps pickups because i feel as though he's um uh, I mean, he's not underrated anymore. Don't get me wrong. He was massively underrated. But last season, people came to appreciate him a lot more than they did before. And um, I feel as though he's now more or less very rightly rated. And uh, I am happy to see him being recognized for his talents. And moving forward, I'd probably even like to see more of his Widow. Because sometimes he can be cracked on Widowmaker. So... Trace and McCree, we already know how good they are, and he could definitely, like, you know, do some Reaper and this and that. And even his soldier is serviceable, but I, I'd love to see more of his widow going forward. Uh, hello? Yeah, Nightwing, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. My, my internet just died out of nowhere. I, I've just have been having the worst luck. The power went out in the, in the morning, and I was playing a ranked game, so I had to, like, play on battery at like 20 fps wow. and, and then my, my battery ran out before the game ended so i lost 50 sr wow. and yeah it was all on stream so that's very cool <laughs> anyway so is it discussing shacks now yeah yeah did you hear none of that i heard none of that my, my internet just died and then came back to life for some reason that's I, okay I didn't get what's happening that's okay do you do you just want to share your thoughts really quick then I can go after. Shax is very good, and that's that's pretty much it. I think he's just one of the best tracers. Uh, his other heroes, I think he just hasn't played that much because they kept spamming the uh, tracer rash meta with LA Valiant last year. Uh, but he's still very good, uh, and I, I'm excited to see what he can do with this roster. I think Shax is more than good, like a good enough. A replacement tracer for Sparker before he comes in, but even then, I think even when Sparker comes in, you still just give the tracer over to Shax and then ask Sparker to play the other DPS. I think that's like the ideal lineup, like an ideal meta for. Uh, I think London would just be to play like Tracer Ash like Valiant did last season. Oh yeah, but or like maybe I don't know how good Sparker's Sombra is because. Uh, I think Danid was playing more Sombra like when it was needed and then they would play the Tracer Sombra that way. But yeah, I think in that scenario, maybe one of them can pick up the Sombra and I think like Tracer Sombra might be good for them as well. But Tracer Ash definitely is, is going to be like a, a good meta for them. So if someone wants to see Shax play, play the exact same thing uh, LA Valiant played last year, but they don't want to watch, uh, you know, we are play instead. Uh, just, just watch London. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. So, I think you guys pretty much covered all the points about Shax. I, I mean, he's a really crack tracer. He can play the hit scan. I don't think he's at the level of most of the hit scans in the league. Just on like the McCree Budavash. He's still good though. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's all about being relatively better when it comes to hit scan, especially. Because if you don't click as many heads as your opponents, you you pretty much lose the game. So in that aspect, I would just trust Shax on Tracer. Not sure if I would just put him on Widow or Ash just yet. But yeah, the, that's pretty much it. And I, I, think, I feel like yeah. I, I feel like I would give Shax a shot just because like you look at Striker, right? It's not like his other heroes are on on the level of his Tracer either. But like when he's given an opportunity and. Like after obviously extensively trying it out uh, in scrims and in, uh, you know, just internally just checking how it all works. I think Shax could still be good because he is good mechanically. It's just that they need to see if that works at the Overwatch League level. I, I, I would say give him a shot. Maybe, maybe he'll surprise you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. 
I, I do believe he is good because you don't you don't simply get to being a great racer if you don't have great tracking or like great aim in general. So that's a fair point. And I think we can mm-hmm. now move on to the supports guys. So let's talk about Kelex and Reaper, uh, who used to be the support line for the British Hurricane. They played with Hardy, Molfig and Sparker. And yeah, now they're playing for London. So, 1HP, do you want to talk about Kelex first? Um, yeah, of course. Um, Kelex, I feel as though I uh, was oddly disappointing for me back when he used to play for the Uprising. Um, oddly disappointing because I felt as though, and you would have noticed it too, many times in a Boston lineup, which was, you know, absolutely going toe-to-toe with the NYXO, it uh, he used to be the the only weak link for me and felt as though sometimes if Kelex would be swapped out for someone better in his role, like Ark was or, for example, Animo was for NY, uh, they would have uh, actually gone on and, you know, won something decent instead of just that flawless stage. So... I feel as though he has grown a lot as a player, especially, I mean, his recent stint with the Hurricane, of course, uh, goes on to show that he now has a knack for winning, which is very important in a player. Like, once you win, you want to keep on winning, which is a very good mentality. And I think going forward, that will help him. And he has been very good in contenders as well. But I feel as though that his return, if you will, into the Overwatch League, I just hope it doesn't bring about any dips in performance or like any of those uh, past mistakes that he used to make. Like um, his mercy somehow was uh, in some of the games with Boston, it used to be like his mercy's absolute dog shit and god tier at the same time. I just don't get it. But uh, I hope that uh, I, I I don't really have that that many problems with this Lucius it's like okay it's really good but his mercy play back then was always lacking for me but recently has been taken care of so I feel as though I shouldn't be making too many past references because uh, you know people grow but um, that that sort of doubt remains in your head and I I, I, I do believe that he will clear it up as, as soon as we start uh, to see more and more activity because he's got a, a very good uh pre-existing synergy based uh, flex support with him and I feel that helps more often than not to sort of just uh, solidify yourself like you said just 16 games and you don't really have too much time to just uh, get settled if you will like every season so I am hoping that uh, Shax just comes in and is able to implement whatever he has learned mm-hmm. uh, okay. yeah, should, I, should I talk about Kalex? Yeah, yeah of course on. yeah yeah, okay. So what I think is, to be fair to Kellex, he was part of uh, Boston when they had that golden stage. I think stage three of season one. But to be unfair to Kellex, he was also part of Boston who looked terrible in season two and didn't really get much done with uh, Toronto either. So, but again, he, he has been doing incredibly well with British Hurricane. And he has a lot of pre-existing synergy with his uh, flex support in Ripper. So maybe he, they've kind of figured out, you know, a good peel pattern and just the kind of ebb and flow of aggression and defense. So that's something that they have going for them. I think Kellex has disappointed, uh, but also impressed at the Overwatch League uh, before. I think it's kind of up in the air, like which side the coin lands, honestly. I think he's definitely put in a very good position to kind of redeem himself after winning so much uh, and so consistently uh, with the British Hurricane and contenders. He's definitely, I think, a player that can be, you know, uh, very re- redeemable. Uh, um, but I think we'll just have to kind of see how how well that goes. Mm-hmm. So I am personally not too high on Galex. Um he has naturally not had too much luck in the league, I would say, similar to Blase. Um, he was on the uprising like Nightwing Seb and they were good. He was with, also with them when they were absolutely terrible. And then he was with the Defiant before he retired and he didn't look great on that roster either. But the thing is, there are no like inherent problems that you can like or, or faults that you can point out about him. 
I think it's mostly Lucio. They're they're both okay. Uh, can't say much about his break at this point. Um, but I don't think there are any gaping holes in his skill set. It's, it's just that he's not done anything to impress, right? That way, which which makes it a bit harder to rate him than most main supports who have been out there, like, and they are either famous or infamous for some of their plays. So, I feel like he. He can make a difference to this team simply because he's got synergy with them from contenders at this point. He's been with them for, what, I think, six months. Uh, but I do believe he did so well with the Hurricane because the team around him was incredible, right? You had a star-studded tank line and a DPS line, and you had Ripa, who we will talk about right now. Uh, but I think he just sort of got a bit carried by his team. Uh, but to say something good about him, he is seemingly a good shot caller and has at least some leadership skills in him. So he does have something to bring to this roster in ad- addition to just like the raw synergy he has with some of these players. So not too high on him like overall, but I don't think he's like a bad player. He's just he's just not great, if that makes sense. And I think now we can talk about Ripper, uh, who's playing flex support. And overall, I think I'll go ahead with Ripper first. So I think he's really good, right, based on what we've seen from his time with the Hurricane. Uh, he seems to be like mechanically gifted. He's super consistent. Uh, his Zen was really impressive in the latest sort of ball Sig meta. Um, and I think he really could be a dark horse flex support. I don't think anyone's going to see how good he is until he actually shows up in the league and then just starts popping off. Um, but I think he's really good. He, was, he wasn't he was that good probably when he was with the Gladiators in Season 2. Barely anyone remembers him from that stint because he got like one map to play instead of Shaz. Um, but yeah, I think this, this also makes for a really fun and interesting storyline, right? Because you've got three players who haven't been able to prove themselves at the Overwatch League level. Probably looking for either a shot at redemption or just some form of glory, right? You've got Blase, you've got um, Galax, and you've got Ripper. So I think this team will have some form of like thirst in them for that to show their skills essentially. And it's going to be really interesting to see if, if that can translate into unexpectedly good gameplay from them. So really positive about Ripper. And yeah, I think you guys can share your thoughts next. Uh, should I should I go ahead? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Ripa definitely did not get a lot of playtime on LA Gladiators. I think some of that might have to do with just the fact that Big Goose and Shaz have had an incredible synergy and they have a lot of experience playing with each other for like an extended amount of time. Um, but I think individually, Ripa has a lot of talent. And I think he might have, considering that he's played with Kalex for quite a while now with British Hurricane, he's kind of fi- found himself like a big goose Shaz X uh, like esque uh, kind of duo to work with. Um, and I think that may be to his advantage in kind of redeeming himself at the Overwatch League level. He definitely did get benched by Shaz if you look at it in that bubble, but. I think it, it's about having like a proper duo that works properly with each other when you're, uh, you know, a pair of supports. So maybe he can deliver. I'm I'm at least a little bit optimistic about him uh, because again they have performed really well in contenders. Uh, it's just it just remains to be seen how they stack up against Overwatch League teams. I think they are still going to be at a disadvantage because like teams are just insanely stacked and the flex support role is still going to make Ripa look not great I, I think um, but the EU, EU talent has just not been tested um, as well um, against the talent that is currently in the Overwatch League so maybe Ripa can surprise but I, I don't really know honestly I think it's something I'm very interested in seeing how he stacks up against other um uh, good to great flex supports in the league. Yeah, it's just uh, with Ripa, um, I feel as though, I mean, we're, we're seeing uh, 
slightly like we, we've already touched upon Calix, I know, but uh, comparing the two within like, you know, within their roles, I, I feel as though, of course, Ripper's are obviously the better deal, but uh, we will benefit from at least, uh, you know, them having some synergy with the, the rest of the roster. And otherwise speaking, while the support line as a whole may not be too solid, but I, I agree with the points you made regarding that they might just be like going with the big goose shacks, uh, sorry, Shaz thing where it's just um, they're, they're trying to build a support line which, which goes off on the same sort of um, symbiosis that the rest of the team seems to be having with, with them having a common ground in their uh from well, given where they come from, and um, I, I feel as though the support line might be the weakest link in the team, but I, I am also ready for them to prove me wrong, and I'm not saying any of this as a way to sort of, uh, let's say, put them down, but uh, it's just one of my concerns, more or less. But uh, happy to be proven wrong, um, as uh, you have put it already. Yeah. Okay then, uh, should we move on and talk about the coaching stuff? Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. So there's not really, I think, much to talk about because we haven't seen Reprise was the head coach, um, coach at this level essentially. Uh, he did like coach for the Valiant in season two, but he was just like an assistant coach with I think Moon initially and then Packington. Not sure how he fit into that timeline. Uh, but before that, he was coaching Mayhem Academy uh, in American Contenders. Overall, I, I don't think the teams he's been on have shown great results. Um, but it hasn't been him at the helm either. So I don't really know how he's going to fit into the league. But it's like to be the head coach of an Overwatch League team is, is a really challenging task. And I think this team's going to have to take things slow with Reprise's coaching because... He is pretty unproven at this stage, um, just overall as a head coach and even in terms of experience in the Overwatch League. So, like the the sort of support stuff for the Spitfire had put out, I think they, they put out a series of videos where they sort of set expectations for their fans, which I think was really cool of them. They just said that, hey, we are not looking to get a championship this year. We are just going to take things slow. We are going to try to be competitive and do our best. But don't expect us to grab that trophy, right? Uh, so I think the Spitfire have got a good support structure around them. I think they can work through these challenges together. I don't think coaching is going to be exceptional, at least immediately. Um, but it's it, it's a start, right? It's a start for them to be building something really new and possibly something special. So yeah, those are all the points I have about Reprise and the support stuff. You guys can go on. I think the, you're definitely right that Nuki, the, the manager, definitely did put out a, a... It's a pretty good move to put out that message. Nuki, um, I forgot that name. Yeah, Nuki. Sorry, yeah. thanks. Yeah. It was... I, I'm quite sure it was Nuki, but it might have been Hoonmaru as well, but I, I'm like 90% sure. It was Nuki, it was, it was Nuki. Nuki. Yeah, yeah, now I remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's a good message to put out and at the very least, I think they will do better than uh, last season's London London roster. I think, uh, speaking of the staff in particular, like, uh, as I mentioned, Nuki, good manager, uh, as far as I know, I mean, I don't know what goes on internally, but at least they're making the right moves in terms of just speaking out about tempered expectations, which is very fair, I believe. Uh, Reprise has not had a lot of success with his with the team that he owns. That is Revival. They've not been doing too great in uh, Contenders NA. Uh, his stint with the Valiant was short, and the time that he did coach for Valiant, Valiant didn't look that great. Uh, I mean, season one Valiant was still all right, but season two Valiant was, as far as I remember, not that impressive. And he comes in for. Uh, coaching uh, London Spitfire. Wait, who who was coaching them from uh, for British Hurricane? Did they even ha they didn't have a coach, right? I'm not actually remember. sure. I'm not sure. I don't think British Hurricane were actually being coached by anyone. 
That's insane. If they were able to be so dominant without a coach, yeah, because but I don't have to verify that. I don't remember a coach ever coming into their interviews. Maybe I'm just like like loony, but I think there would be like people like Hardy and Ripa that would come into the uh, calls with Lemon Kiwi. And like at least the, the weeks of contenders that I've watched, I I don't really know. But I'm not too too hot on replies uh, personally, just because he hasn't had a lot of stuff to show. Oh wait, I I was discussing this with one HP before the show. I couldn't remember which which tournament uh, London played on. They played yeah. on the Steel Series Invitational. I was trying to look mm-hmm. for the LA, LA Valiant Winter Ball. <laughs> I've been trying to look for this the entire time during the episode. Yeah. They had a head coach, by the way. The they did. It it was Fisher and sorry, not Fisher, Fisher. Fisher, Fisher yeah. Fisher, so Fisher sorry. Fisher yeah. is coming in as an assistant coach, right? Yeah, and they the the British Hurricanes new additions being coached by Chao. Is that how you pronounce it, or is it Chao? The Russian off tank. Yeah, Chao um, or Chao. I didn't know Chao could coach. Chao, yeah. That's interesting. Um, that's cool because Fisher has experience as a main tank. Uh, not to be confused with Fisher, Fisher was also a good main tank, and he had success with British Hurricane. So I'm happy to see him in. Reprise, I'm not too sure of, but hopefully more of the coaching role can just be, at least like, um, Fisher can just be responsible for more of it. Because if if it's working in EU contenders, then maybe it'll work at, to some degree to the Overwatch League level as well. So I'm happy to see those people in. Uh, but yeah, like overall, not not too big a fan of like C9 as an org in the whole because they just keep picking up rosters and scrapping rosters. But I am happy to see British Hurricane just move up to the Overwatch League level. Uh, and I'm happy to see that Fisher is there with them still. Uh, yeah, that's. I think I've pretty much said what I think about this stuff. One HP. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just to add a little, it's just. Um, I totally agree that we're we're not feeling too hot on reprise, but I feel hope in the sense that you know, with with Fisher just sort of shadowing or rather just helping him uh, so get get a feel for the entire British Hurricane roster while also just uh, bringing what he's got to the table. We might as well just see this as a team which is just sort of building for the long time. I don't think they could have done a sort of like a possible rebuild centered around a promoted team uh, with just uh, the odd 16-20 games. So I'm hoping that if Reprise doesn't do well, then we just see Fisher replace him full time as uh, you know on the head coach role and going into next season, which will actually be the actual first decent season since COVID has ended, uh, and we just uh, then see what they've got. So I think like most teams, they're trying to utilize this coming season, uh, like most rebuilding teams, if you will, trying to utilize the upcoming season as a way to test some things out as well as get a very strong foundation and know what players and coaching staff work for them and what doesn't so that they are all uh, and this is not just about london this is even like teams like nyxl which are supposed to be higher up in the performance uh, bracket but this is all this is for all of those teams that they are trying to see uh trying to become those organizations that are just a few players away from being absolute top tier. So I feel as though this upcoming season will will bring us a lot of interest and this coaching stuff like very well reflects it because Reprise, I think, might as well just be kept for the fact that he has already coached in, you know, at the very top. So that, um, you know, even if we say that he's he hasn't been exceptional, it still is something that's considered very valuable. So him having the support of someone who's seen as much success as, let's say, the the Hurricane coaches. So we can expect decent things. I'm not just saying that they'll do anything extraordinary. Okay, fair enough. So um, I think let's just give our overall final thoughts on where we think this team stands and what we think that trajectory is going to be. Yeah, go ahead, Nightman. Yeah. Okay, so... 
because i have finally finally found the tournament that i was looking for i could not remember for the life <laughs> which which tournament it was it was the steel series invitational and and i watched this entire thing the the four teams that participated in this they were the paris eternal boston uprising la gladiators and london spitfire right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it it was uh, boston and boston and gladiators in the finals but but the true finals was the the first round the match between la gladiators and london split uh, spitfire mm-hmm. yeah. these guys played really well it went to a map 5 which i think can speak to some degree uh, they were playing the they were playing like a lot of very tank comps actually they were playing like ryan diva rush some people were picking up like um ryan orissa for like some silliness on lejong um i think morphic was also playing sigma at some point if i remember correctly uh there was just a lot of like very tanks played here and i think london spitfire like uh, responded decently to gladiators i mean that speaks in the map score as well it was it was quite a close match i think london could have won it uh if they were just uh, they had a few better pieces um i i'm not not particularly looking at blaze but i mean may, maybe i i i'm just maybe 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 if danet was there they'd have a slightly better chance i i don't know they just really impressed me in that tournament now that i remember <laughs> what it was called um so yeah i think i'm actually quite high on london spitfire compared to some other people i think some people are equating them to paris just because both of them are uh, vaguely eu rosters yes um but <laughs> i think london london are much much better than paris and uh, like if, if london and paris face off i would be so disappointed if london lose like at all so i think london are actually quite competitive uh, in the middle of the pack not quite punching above i would say maybe the top tier would uh, in na you would look at like shock or gladiators but london can just sneak in a win here and there and they can definitely make a, a run for a tournament i think in the given the right meta and i i think i would really love to see them kind of do that because i think they are actually quite a strong middle of the pack team they they could really surprise at times yeah i totally agree with you i think it's A, a team's flexibility is usually determined by how flexible their tank players are, and I think Hardy and Molfik pretty much cover all bases, and they cover all bases pretty well. So I think that's a really big advantage to the Spitfire. Uh, I think their DPS lines okay, just just because Blaze and Hybrid might not be that good. I have full faith in Shax and Sparker. Um, then speaking of Kellex and Ripa, I think Ripa is really good. overall the the support line could be middle of the pack as well so yeah overall i think it's it's a good it's a good start for a roster that's just been elevated from contenders i think middle of the pack is where you should expect to see them and uh, you shouldn't like don't underrate this team i think that that's probably any owl fans biggest mistake is to underrate this roster don't like please just just remember how dominant runaway was and just think about this roster because they they pretty much have like five out of six pieces from the british hurricane starting lineup and that's a huge deal please don't underrate that that's all yeah, i have to some, say yeah something that people are underrating definitely is the fact that these guys have played for an extended period of time they've not blown up or anything they have been ex- like consistently dominating yeah which is which is very rare for a lot of these other teams other teams are picking up star players here and there you looked at our toronto review they've picked up hisu which is a good player but then there are some other questions and uh, like it's just that they need to find the synergy to work together right this roster they they have already figured out and ironed out all of those issues their supports are playing very well with each other their tanks are playing very well with each other um they've picked up shax who is a great tracer player and tracer is a more of an individual hero a lot of the time mm. so uh, that shouldn't be a huge problem plus shax has a lot of experience he'll fit right in um this team has a lot of synergy uh, going for them uh, even if some might say that you know x player on x team is more individually talented i think this team is is definitely quite a sleeper pick 
um and will will really surprise mm-hmm. one hp any closing thoughts yeah no, just slightly conflicting thoughts i wouldn't say totally but uh medal of the pack as you guys said totally expected uh but i think that other than their tank line we are kind of hoping for too many good things from like if you compare their support and dps lineup to what we've got in the league it's not even middle of the pack for me so um the tank line could absolute compete for top but the thing is that they are still new as much as they might have dominated and might have the pre-existing synergies and while we made that comparison to runaway before runaway was there since the beginning of time really <laughs> for as long as i've been watching or watch uh, 75% of the roster was there so that's a very different thing and also um i will note make a note of this that i can see them doing like you know even amazingly well but not just the upcoming season i'm talking about the one after so as for the current season i would say that they should totally aim for slightly higher than middle of the pack but i am realistically not expecting them to go further than you know said middle so um speaking otherwise just uh, would agree uh, on all of the points made i think they are a bit underappreciated in what they have been doing but um you can't see them doing anything exceptional other than a few upsets from my perspective so yeah that's it I- i'm a little confused as to like are they operating out of london because like how does the tournament thing work like do do they have to play on like 200 ping no 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 like... so they'll play uh, so they've added the minimum latency feature right to overwatch so they'll be using that so whichever team has the lower ping will be given like artificially higher latency to match the ping of the like farther away team sort of so let's say mm-hmm. if if they are playing on american servers uh, and london has let's say 150 ping then they will make sure that the american team also has 150 ping artificially so that's what's going to happen they they want to make that, sure it's balanced that's fair but how do you play against a team from korea like uh, hypothetically if london makes it to like like a tournament finals oh yeah, everyone's going to, to hawaii right everyone's going to hawaii yeah that's that's going to be interesting the they're going to have to get visas to the us i, I guess some of them already have Yeah, uh, hybrid is from America, so he should he'll have his passport. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine being stuck with hybrid during the. Hybrid tournament. is from UK. Is from the UK. Oh my bad, hybrid is from the UK. Bla- yeah, yeah. Blase is from. Uh, Blase, sorry, yeah, Blase. Anyway, yeah. Words, names. I mean, I wouldn't expect them to get into tournament. It's just something I was kind of confused about. But the minimum latency thing is there, so even if they're stuck in like UK. it's still going to be a fair match so that's okay yeah um but yeah interesting team mm. uh also guys i think uh, i haven't probably brought this up enough but if you guys want to link up with some overwatch league fans there are some in my discord server it's a small but growing community but you can join by checking out the link in the description below uh if you want some like-minded fans to discuss the teams with or just the latest updates or even like have a live match chat you can join the server we got you covered yeah, so we sometimes do watch parties with like a few people uh mm-hmm. we also have pugs um you, you if you're from like na you might have kind of high ping but i don't know you could check it out they're pretty fun mhm so yeah all sorts of fun stuff happens on that server So yeah we hope to see you there and I think on that note we can round off this episode any any points left to add guys No not really no okay. No I just mm-hmm. I just wish like we, we were doing like episodes where we could talk about signings that we missed because we made the episode too soon True true Um we'll have to figure out how to work with that Because Chengdu just signed a new player, but we made our episode like two, three weeks ago. I don't even remember. So yeah, and we, we're gonna have to figure that format out. I think if we you can... have a suggestion on, if you have a suggestion on how we do that, write it in the comments because <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. We could probably just 
touch upon those like elaborate a bit more about those players during our power rankings episode because there won't be too many additional signings i think because there's like barely any time left for the season right i think it's there's like 3 weeks remaining so yeah that's fair yeah, we probably won't be seeing too many but yeah uh, you guys thanks a lot for watching this video if you liked it liked our analyses remember to like the video comment do suggest how we can cover these new signings in case you don't want to wait for the power rankings episode uh, and also let us know what you think of london because there's there's a lot of different varying interesting thoughts uh, and maybe some points we haven't caught so we'd be really interested in reading those and also remember to share the video with any other overwatch league fans you know and help us keep the the conversation about the overwatch league alive and flowing uh, and which team do you want to do next guys I mean after signing rascal I would love to do Philly Fusion but if there's some other team you want to look at that's okay one hp you good with fusion yeah i'm good with fusion very interesting yeah i'm actually pumped i love this team so yeah we'll be covering the philly fusion in our next episode guys do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified when we upload that video and on that note we bid you all au revoir or as the friends say it See you later. I don't know what I was going for there. Uh, uh, I did French back in school, good. but I was never good at it. It's oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get it right when we do the Paris Eternal episode. Don't worry. We oui, we. Oui. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Bye bye.